All right, we're going to go to the Foreign Affairs Minister, Melanie Jolie, who is talking about efforts to get Canadians out of Sudan. Two flights left today. Let's listen in. Around 800 people that have raised their hands to be supported by global affairs, by our diplomats helping out. Some need help to leave by land, and some need help to leave by air. Um, at this point, more than 200 Canadians have left Sudan and are now in safe third countries. Um, we've negotiated safe passage with many countries already with Egypt, with Ethiopia, and with Kenya. And this morning, I was able to reach a deal with Chad to make sure that there would be a safe passage with Chad for our Canadians. May they be dual nationals uh, because a Canadian is a Canadian is a Canadian. Now, um, there are two Canadians flight that left Sudan this morning. We'll have more to say later today as they are right now transiting and we'll have more information to give you about the manifests, about who is on the flight. And we are looking at other options in the coming days. Now, our main preoccupation in terms of operation at this point is to make sure that the ceasefire, which is technically ending tonight, is extended. So we're reaching out to many uh, countries, and, and, and I'm reaching out to many of my counterparts uh, to get updates about the negotiations and to make sure that that is the case, and we hope for the best. So I'm here. Uh, to answer your question, so you know, this is our utmost priority and our goal is to make sure that Canadians are safe and uh, for those who want to leave Sudan, that they have options uh, to be able to take a decision. Uh, so I'll take it, I'll do it in French and then I can answer your questions, okay? Donc, um, présentement, il y a environ 130 personnes qui travaillent... There are currently about 130 people working at Global Affairs Canada, offering services 24-7. There are currently about 1,700 people that have registered with our system. That number's gone down since yesterday. About 800 people have raised their hand requesting assistance. Sometimes they're asking assistance to leave uh, by air transport, but many of them are seeking ground transportation uh, because not everyone is in the capital in Khartoum. People are spread out across the territory in Sudan. So far, there are over 200 people who have left Sudan, and we've negotiated safe passage with several countries, including Egypt, Kenya, this morning it was uh, Chad, but before Egypt, Kenya. I know it's not Chad, you're telling me Chad. Yes, it's Ethiopia. Sorry about that. Kenya and then this morning Chad. The objective now is to give Canadians options and aid in international efforts to ensure that Canadians have access to air transport. This has been going on since the beginning of the conflict. So far, two flights have landed in Sudan and picked up Canadians this morning. I'll have more information later this afternoon because these flights are currently in transit. At the time, I'll also be able to provide more information on the manifests, for example, who is on those flights. Know that we are part of an international cooperation effort. We are taking Canadians, but we're also taking citizens from other countries, just as those countries have taken some of our Canadian citizens. We're currently looking to other options over the next few days. Right now, my biggest concern is to extend the ceasefire that is supposed to end tonight and continue diplomatic negotiations to extend that ceasefire. I'm in touch with my counterparts to, counterparts to see where that, those uh, negotiations are. Standard practice for the Liberal Cabinet to not read emails? Um, I know what you're asking me about, Marike. I think you're talking about the question of Afghanistan. And on the question of Afghanistan, I know that there's a, uh, uh, an investigation that is happening, and that will be my only comment. Are you reading your emails during this crisis in Sudan? 
I'm reading uh, texts and, and emails, and uh, I'm reaching out to my colleagues. Uh, but right now, my goal is to make sure the Canadians are getting out of Sudan. If basically they want to, they need to be able to have access to options. And on Sudan, can you explain why uh, you're using? Um, why you're not using C-17s, which are much bigger than the planes that you're using right now? So there are um, there are some technical issues with um, with uh, the um, airport where uh, we're that we're dealing with. CAF members could really answer more of your questions, and that definitely uh, Minister Anand. But clearly, we've been able to make sure that there would be a good coordination with other countries, as this is a very difficult situation. The airport of Khartoum, which is the biggest airport, is not an option because the airway is not is not open. There are lots of um, waste on it. It is extremely dangerous. So. What we're dealing with is an air, uh, an air base which is 20 kilometers out of Khartoum, which has a shorter um, how do you, landing, uh, landing runway. runway. There's a shorter uh, runway. Just for example, Madame, we're not able to say how many people on each of the planes. Is that right? We'll have that information by the end of today. If there is no ceasefire, no extension of the ceasefire, how will you be able to get Canadians out? Will you still try and do it? We will make decisions based on security considerations and the ability to be able to land at the airport that I mentioned. But we are looking into several options. As you know, Canada has two ships in the region. And there are coordination efforts taking place out of the port of Sudan with the UK that have a strong presence there. And so I know that the Minister of Defence is looking into several options. It's more than at the beginning of the week. Do you plan to increase the crisis resources assigned? It was between 80 and 130 from the beginning, but now since two flights have left Sudan, then we know that there are many people. The most important thing is that people can access information and can make an informed decision. As you know, the situation in Sudan before this was qualified by Antonio Guterres as the most dangerous place in the world. So under the circumstances, we are acting with diligence, but we know we need to make efforts to get Canadians out in these difficult times. It seems like it keeps happening that places in the world fall into chaos and then we have to scramble to get our people out when there have been warnings that the chaos was coming. This is not just a one-off now, it's happening multiple times. Uh, well, first and foremost, I will push back on the fact that we were warned that this was happening in the sense that there are many hotspots on the, in the world and there are many hotspots, particularly in Africa. I was at the G7 with all my counterparts when this started. I was in Nagano, Japan, and we all started working together. And we've been at this since day one, working with other countries to find a place to do an airlift, to secure that place, to make sure that we would be working together. That's why Germany, the UK, France have been taking some of our nationals. We're taking some of their nationals together uh, as we speak as well. And, you know, at the end of the day, I'm not into Monday morning quarterbacking. My job is to get Canadians outside of Sudan and we will make sure that that's the case. There were some... We've been speaking with people who have family there on the yeah. ground. Like many, they've been experiencing this issue of getting to the airfield, getting onto the airplanes or whatever. But now yeah. we're hearing reports from some family that once they've boarded the plane, they've then been told there's too many people on board and they've had to leave. Have you get off the plane? Have you heard any reports of that? No, I haven't had any reports of that. I'm sorry, but that... That's not the information I've got. Our goal is to make sure that people have options when they decide to come and take an airlift, that they're able to get to a safe third country. When they are in that safe country, our embassies and our diplomats are helping them to find a way to get to Canada. Are there any exceptions made for dependents? I know there, were, there was one family we were speaking with that were trying to work on getting a grandmother out of there, though not te technically a dependent. This is someone that needed health 
assistance. That's why their family was there. Have there been any special immigration documents granted to people beyond so Canadian citizens? I heard through the media this specific case, so I've asked my, my diplomats to look into this because obviously we'll uh, make sure that we have a very humane and, and also uh, a very empathetic way of dealing with this crisis. When's the next flight? Uh, well, right now there are two uh, Canadian flights that are one that has happened and that is transitioning and one that is underway. And we'll have more to say in the coming uh, days. We have to take into account the ceasefire.